applause for Josh Carino, everybody. Give it up for him. I don't even know. I'm not even a comic. I just came here to sell Dan drugs, and he was like, you can get on stage. <laughs> Sometimes. How's everybody doing? What's going on? I, uh, I gotta get out of New York City. It's done. I've been living here for seven years. Seven years too long. Got on the vomit train on the subway the other day. You guys got on the vomit car before? Do you know what I'm talking about? The vomit car, for those of you who don't know, is when someone vomits all over the floor of the subway car, usually by the door, so that when you walk in, you step directly in it. Ding dong, door's closed, time to go to work. Now, I've been living here for a while. When you get on the vomit car, here's a tip. Stay on the car until the next stop. Then get off and go to the next car. Up. Don't tell anyone getting on the vomit car that there's vomit there. That's for your brain. As you watch them from the other car, and they get the ding dong and they get trapped, and you get to laugh and go to work. Now, a problem arose last week when I was on the vomit car. I got off at the next stop. Everyone from the next car up ran onto the vomit car. Something's wrong. And I'm an investigator. I'm going to investigate. Turns out, every homeless man in New York City had formed a camp on the next car up. Okay? They were sleeping on the seats. They had a hopscotch course going down the lane. They had a hammock set up. They had a government form. There were laws. Warm shit in your pants was the first law, and that law, Gotham Comedy Club, never broken. Law-abiding citizens running an underground city. Now, I had to make a decision. Do I stay on the homeless car, or do I go back to the vomit car? <laughs> Stayed on the homeless car, okay? Look at me. I can pass. <laughs> I can go undercover. Dirt on my face, maybe win some money on the chicken fights? Who knows? <laughs> if I go back to the vomit car, they're just going to think I was the one that vomited. That is not the case. I do my vomiting at home in private. Light a candle, put on some Tony Braxton, get it done. <laughs> Just because you're nauseous doesn't mean you can't be sexy. <laughs> I live down in Red Hook, Brooklyn, which is not the nicest neighborhood. I pay $800 a month for my room. I live with three other dudes. They each pay $800 a month for their rooms. We live in a one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> the same room. refrigerator where you put like baby carrots and, and cucumbers and salad and stuff. That's where my friend sleeps. <laughs> he is an eggplant though, so it works. <laughs> Craigslist. We're, we're roommates. <laughs> Speaking of Craigslist, if you want to enjoy living in New York City for the price you're paying to live here, don't go on Craigslist and look up apartment prices in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, oh, don't ever do that. Why would you do that? Why do I do that every day? <laughs> For $350, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you can have a four-bedroom house. Oh yeah, jam in a pool, you get a free TV for signing your three-month lease. Hey, do you guys like smoking marijuana? They got a guy. Go come by your place, first ounce, totally free. Every ounce after that is only $25. And it's all on credit, so you basically never have to pay. Milwaukee will get into a van, drive to Brooklyn, and pick you up. All of them will be like a small, medium-sized family van. For $1,600 in Des Moines, Iowa, you can have a farm. And not like an abandoned, derelict farm. You can have a working farm, make your own quinoa or steel cut oatmeal, make your own whatever, whatever you want to do. How do they pay the staff, you ask? Oh, there's like 18 people on the staff, that's right. They pay them out of your $50 deposit. The rest of America knows what's happening. You may not be surprised to know that I was in an ice cream store recently. <laughs> I went to Baskin Robbins, or should I say I went to Dunkin' Donuts, Baskin Robbins is just staying there for a little while. <laughs> trying to get back on its feet. What's happening to you, Baskin Robbins? You were once a great noble ice cream empire, now Carvel's whipping your ass with all kinds of dilly bars. What are you doing? I went to the ice cream cake freezer. That's my normal hangout. I saw a Jets ice cream cake. Now this was about a month ago. 
you guys follow football last year, you'll know that the Jets don't deserve an ice cream cake. Uh, this cake was on sale. <laughs> Let me tell you how much it costs. Forty-five dollars. On sale. I went to the guy behind the counter and said, Yeah, just give it to me. You have trash in your freezer. No one is going to eat that cake. Put it inside me. I'm the garbage man. I'm here to take out the trash. Oh, you can call the police. I will stay here as long as I can. Well, please. Then they called the police. And I got three scoops of ice cream for a dollar because it was 31 cent scoop Wednesday. Come with me. We'll do all the best snacks. I love ice cream. I love bodegas. Can we give it up for the bodegas in New York City people? Come on. Up. Bodegas are where America's at. I spend about $45 every night at the bodega, I'll be honest. I smoke a lot of marijuana and uh, snacks get eaten. I walk in, get an iced honey bun, can of Arizona iced tea, bag of Cheetos, bag of white cheddar Cheetos, bag of hot Cheetos, bag of white cheddar hot Cheetos, bag of microwave popcorn, bag of regular popcorn, bag of popcorn kernels, in case I want to make my own one day, get a Snickers, get a Snickers almond, get a Snickers peanut butter squares, get a Mounds, get an Almond Joy, because I play both sides, ladies. <laughs> Get a can of coconut milk in case I want to make a curry one day. You never know when that's going to happen. Sometimes you're like, i, I got to make a curry, no coconut milk. And then what do you do? It's awful. It's awful. Get some cat food for my cats because they're not really digging my cheese doodle diet that I put them on. That's cool. Wrap it all up with a Lucy, which is, you know, a single cigarette. And I take that all home. And I lay it on my bed. And I put on Top Chef. And I pretend that what they're doing on Top Chef is what I'm doing in my bed. But it's not the same. See, Padma, what I've done here for my quick fire is I've lightly roasted a nice honey bun on one side so that the skin is light and crispy. And I've made a reduction of Sour Patch Kids, which I don't know grizzle. All in the plate. I've made a foam of beef patty with cheese, which I will now inject into the middle of the ice honey bun. Top it all off with the Newport 100, and you are good to go. It is Bodega Fusion, and I am the chef of the future. Hop into my spaceship, Tom Colicchio. And then I stop tripping on Salvia. Any Top Chef fans here? Top Chef fans? I love Top Chef. I have three cats. Uh, they're all named after time. Yeah, not so, not so much enthusiasm for a man with three cats. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I have three cats. I love Top Chef. They're all named after Top Chef characters. There's Top Colicchio, he's a fat, hairless cat. There's Padma Lakshmi, she's a cute Persian cat. And there's special guest judge, award winning host of Travel Channel's No Reservation, Anthony Bourdain. But no, that is the cat's full name. <laughs> When he pisses me off, because he does that a lot, you just have to kind of be like special guest, judge, award-winning host, of travel <laughs> channel, <laughs> Anthony Bourdain, get the hell out of the dish rack! <laughs> Don't make me say it one more time. Special guest, judge, award-winning host, of travel channels, no reservations, Anthony Bourdain, get out of the dish rack! Tony Bourdain will not get out of the dish rack. I have some reservations about that hearing now. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad. I'm Josh Greeno. Have a good night, guys. Oh. Good round of applause for Josh, everybody.